Boruto is back, and not just back, but back again with heat. It's crazy how good the anime and manga have been for a while now. Every week the anime brings hype, and every month the manga matches that quality. This month we have a crazy chapter. So well written. Could just be me, but I'm getting Kishimoto vibes in this one. Let us know in the comments if you guys agree with that. As always, if you haven't already, please be sure to drop a like to help us out, and subscribe to Plot Remote Notifications on to never miss an upload. With that said, let's get into this. The chapter opens up in Konoha with Naruto and Boruto discussing the pills created by Amato to slow the Osutsuki transformation. Naruto would explain to Boruto that they were originally developed for another purpose, but if all goes well, they'll have a positive effect. He'd make it clear that they won't get rid of karma, nor will they reverse the effects that have already taken place. They're simply a way of slowing the process from here. Boruto would examine the pills, pouring a few out on a plate to do so. Naruto would continue to explain that the issue is they have no idea what kind of side effects these pills may cause. There's even a possibility it could kill Boruto. Boruto would pause now after hearing this information. Naruto would make it clear that he won't force Boruto to take them. It's simply an option, one that Boruto can take time and think over carefully. Now holding a pill, Boruto would pause for a moment before quickly going through with it, eating the pill. Leaving Naruto shocked, Boruto was now super casually asking at what rate he should consume them. But Naruto was stunned. The look of shock he had while asking if Boruto hadn't even listened to him was just hilarious. Boruto would explain that he listened, and like Naruto said, the choice was his. It just happened to be a quick decision, instead of a longer one like Naruto had wished. Naruto's frustration would quickly turn to concern though. At the moment though, Boruto was feeling fine. He's for a while now been prepared for the worst when it comes to karma. This was the reason he was able to decide really fast with the pills. Surprisingly, he then apologized to his father for the scare. This kind of touched Naruto. Maybe to see his son have such conviction, and even apologize without being prompted to, moves him. This combined with the situation really seemed to make Naruto think for a moment. Boruto was grateful for the pills in the end, and we'd go elsewhere in Konoha. He'd meet up with Kawaki and the others, and talk about his medicine. Kawaki seemed pretty judgmental about the decision. It seems like this was mostly because it might jeopardize their plans to fight Code and implant him with karma. An argument would ensue with Boruto's point being the plan was just hypothetical anyway. There was no guarantee it would have worked out. Sarada would now join in on the conversation, telling them to stop the bickering because they were here to train. It was then that we'd get a full picture of the scene. They were in a circle, meditating. From a distance, Naruto and Konohamaru were watching this. Konohamaru would observe that Kawaki pretty much has no team spirit, but Naruto wouldn't respond to this. Back to the kids, the argument would continue. Kawaki would remind them that they're no match for code, and frankly, I have to agree here, but Boruto would remind him that that's why they're here training, which is also valid. Sarada would again speak up and try to get them to stop, but Kawaki would tell her to shut up. In his mind, there was no point in this meditation. Sarada would explain that it's important for chakra control and be annoyed that Kawaki was acting bossy despite being a total beginner. Kawaki understood the basics were important, but felt spending too much time on it was pointless. Boruto would now join in and question whether Kawaki was looking down on shinobi training. Kawaki would then explain that it's just simply inefficient. Mizuki would ask the right question though, what does Kawaki suggest they do instead? Kawaki would present a simple solution while glancing over towards Mizuki. Just then, he'd move. His modified arm would extend and quickly attack Mitsuki. But Mitsuki was equally as fast, grabbing the outstretched arm of Kawaki and putting an end to that attack. Boruto was angry now, but Kawaki was ignoring this, instead admiring Mitsuki's block and saying that he has promise. Mitsuki was with this vibe more than the rest of his squad. He was happy to go either way, basic training or combat. At this point, Konohamaru was concerned and ready to intervene, but Naruto stopped him. The drama would then continue. Sarada would remind everyone that she's the squad leader, they can't go off making decisions without her. Kawaki wouldn't even respond to that, instead he'd share his trauma. He'd tell them how he was trained by Jigen through grueling combat drills. It was literal hell, but it worked. He rapidly improved. The fight would continue now, with Kawaki freeing himself of Mitsuki's grip and again without hesitation going in for a hit, this time with more of a blade-shaped arm. Kawaki had enough of the whining at this point and told them to come at him. He'd go at Sarada now with the same modified arm form, but she dodged this, jumping into the air, and with anger, she let off a fireball jutsu. This was easy for Kawaki, he'd block it with a shield-shaped arm, and with all the smoke from the impact, he'd then take the opportunity and dash away. Sarada easily saw through this and threw two shuriken at him, landing both, one in Kawaki's arm and one in his leg. Everyone was shocked. That should have been dodged easily. 
Kawaki's body was then left on the floor, but it then disappeared. It was a shadow clone. Just then, Kawaki would reappear behind Sarada, ready to end it all. With his bladed arm, he'd go for her head, but out of nowhere, Boruto came to block this attack. For him, this was enough. Kawaki would tell him to relax. This was just sparring, no one was gonna die here. Boruto would throw this back at him, but it was no use. Sarada would say that maybe he needs to show Kawaki by force. I thought this was interesting because she basically couldn't be Kawaki on her own, and now she's kind of asking Boruto to do it. I thought she was more prideful than that, but I guess not in this moment. Boruto would accept this suggestion and make it clear that this was going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. It was simple, a 1v1 to decide whose way of training they would use. Konohamaru would from a distance still be concerned about all this, but the rules were set. Boruto would remind Kawaki that they used to fight like this all the time when they first met, and Kawaki would respond that Boruto was generally the cause of all that. The two would now stand face to face and begin. It looks a bit funny, but they'd punch each other in the face simultaneously, and then Kawaki would go on the offense with his arm. Dodging it was easy enough for Boruto, who would then activate his Shadow Clone Jutsu midair and go on the offensive. Kawaki would jump back and easily handle this situation with his modified arm. Now, with some distance between them, Boruto would attempt to use Rasengan, but this effort would be put down. However, Boruto would still charge forward, but just as he did this though, Kawaki would send a large blast in his direction. Without hesitation, yeah, let's acknowledge that, without hesitation, Boruto would activate Karma, extend his arm, and absorb the blast. Kawaki was pissed about this, but there was no time to think too hard because Boruto was already preparing his response. Lightning style thunderclap arrow. Instinctively, Kawaki would attempt to absorb the power just like Boruto did, but instead, he'd take the blast directly. He had no karma to activate. It was over. Now looking at his hand, Kawaki would think to himself that he's more dependent on karma than he'd previously thought. Boruto would claim his victory and ask if Kawaki had any complaints. But Kawaki wasn't hearing this really, he was in his own head right now. He was disappointed. He'd look at Naruto now from a distance and think that this was pathetic. How could he protect the Hokage when he's in such a state? Now standing over Kawaki, Boruto would say that one thing has changed since they first met. He could now tell what Kawaki was thinking more or less. Then reminding him that they're all friends, he can rely on them. Lastly, he'd tell Kawaki that none of this was his fault. They just need to come together and put a stop to the ones doing bad because that's what Shinobi do. Naruto and Konohamaru would acknowledge Boruto's growth here and I think we should as well. He's changed a lot since the beginning of the story. Kawaki would now concede but add a little bit of fire to that and say that those words would sound better coming from someone more reliable. Kawaki would agree to stick around longer and do things their way. With a more serious look than we've seen from him at all this chapter, Naruto would think to himself that if they all just go for it, they might get a lot stronger. A bit obvious, but yeah. It was time to resume training and the chapter would end with Kawaki swearing to himself that he'll get stronger no matter what it takes. Getting major foreshadowing vibes here and throughout the fight with Boruto in general. We know Kawaki somehow gets a karma again, and based on the way he's talking throughout this chapter, it doesn't sound like it'll be forced onto him, it might be something he willingly accepts to be stronger for his cause. Of course, there are then still a lot of questions like what happens to Naruto in the end, but there's definitely something deeper to Kawaki's dialogue in this chapter. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Overall, this was a great chapter, a really solid read. The writing was perfect this time around, and I genuinely have no complaints about anything. If there's anything you guys want us to discuss before the next Boruto chapter, let us know in the comments, and we just might make it happen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to Plotter Notifications on to never miss an upload. We upload almost daily, and we'd love to have you join in on our discussions. If you'd like to support the channel even further, check out our Patreon link in the description below, and follow our Instagram and Twitter pages to stay up to date on all the latest anime and manga news. With that said, until next time, keep that plotter on you. I'm KJ. Have a great day. Bye.